Christina, we have a show to do and you're goofing off. What's going on? Nancy, I'm working on my girl power. Didn't you hear 2009 was the year of the female? I want to keep it going for 2010. <laughs> and you know, actually, you should be doing it too. Ugh, come on. Well, while we work on our girl power for 2010, take a quick look at what happened in 2009. Ventura and Fernley coming to the wire. Ventura would buy mile magic. Here's a Philly for the ages. A Haskell legend. Rachel Adams and Rundlet. Gold to Cobra is just scintillating. Gold to Cobra is something special. The rock is flying on the grandstand side. Gio Ponti on the inside. Summer Bird is right there. This is unbelievable. The ladies reigned supreme in 2009, starting back with the Preakness with Rachel Alexandra and all the way to the end of the year with Vodka winning in the Japan Cup, a race that Chris Katulak and I covered over at Tokyo Racecourse. Let's start with the two big guns. They're both up for Horse of the Year, though, Christina, Rachel Alexandra and Zenyatta. And what do you think, years from now, when we talk about Rachel Alexandra, where is she going to rate among the greats of all time? I think her campaign this year was unprecedented, and especially when you consider the fact that she was a three-year-old filly. You go back and look at some of the numbers that she put up. Biggest margin in the history of the Kentucky Oaks, the Mother Goose, and the Fantasy. First filly to win the Preakness in 85 years. First filly to ever win the Woodward. Everything she did this year was absolutely spectacular. Going to hurt her at all, you two, you think, that she didn't show up for the big race, the Breeders' Cup Classic? I think it is going to hurt her, so. um, whether or not that's the telling item as to if she's crowned uh, champion or not, but it will work against her. What about Zenyatta? Of course, hard to, I was there for the Woodward for Rachel Alexander. I was there for the Breeders' Cup Classic for, uh, for Zenyatta as well. Hard to think of a better moment in racing where everyone kind of came together and watched that victory by Zenyatta and, and what she accomplished coming from last to first. Uh, Nancy, talk about the performance. You know what, there was not, I think, a dry eye in the house. And I know a, a lot of people, you know, not only had a, different horses on their tickets, but you couldn't help but watch Zenyatta come around the track and you kept hearing Trevor Demon, she's dead last, she's dead last. So you had no choice but to watch her compete with Mike Smith just giving a brilliant ride around the Santa Anita Oval and just to watch her make her run and a brilliant pilot job and just that kick that she is known for come I just got goosebumps just talking about it <laughs> and just the kick that she made and just to come around to the outside and just burst to the finish line and just the roar of the crowd was just something that will never be forgotten in horse racing. Such monumental stories these two. It kind of relegated some other stories that in any other year would be front page in horse racing. But because of Rachel and Zenyatta, we didn't talk a whole lot about it. But let's start with, with Goldakova. And I guess, Christine, I can ask you this, too. I mean, amazing what she accomplished. Back-to-back -back wins in the Breeders' Cup Mile. Yeah, and especially, you know, the year of the girl power, as you say. The Philly coming back to win it back-to-back. -back. Freddie Head, her jockey, or her trainer, excuse me, was the jockey of Mieska, another Philly that won the Breeders' Cup Mile in years past. And Goldakova's actual race, I went back and watched the replay, it was very impressive. She broke slow, she dropped way back off the pace, and as she turned for home, she got in a little bit of trouble, had to re-rally. And when you watch the last few strides as before she hit the wire, she was kind of geared down. It didn't look that difficult for her. I'm just glad she's going to be back in 2010. Ventura, we saw beat the boys. I mean, all year long, this was a theme, and it just kept going and going and going. She beat the boys in the wood by mile. Who, who thought Ventura was going to win in the Philly and Mare Sprint? I did. In <laughs> fact, for yeah. me, that's the worst <laughs> wager I've ever lost with a Philly or Mare or racehorse that ran so well. Right. I mean, at no point did I think I was going to lose until informed decision just kept right on going. And she ran well all year, first or second all year, beat the boys. The only horses that defeated Ventura this year, informed decision and Gio Ponti. Well, those, those are the horses, too. There were stories, though, elsewhere, too, like Linda Rice. She made history at Saratoga, first ever training title at Saratoga for a female. Yeah, I was really glad to see that, Nancy. I know mm -hmm. you were, too. I mean, 20 wins in the 38 days of the Saratoga meet. And when you think about Saratoga Racecourse, as long as it's been around, it's the oldest sporting venue 
that is around and functioning right now, not just the oldest racetrack, and also the competition at Saratoga. Everybody brings their best horses. It's hard to win one race there, let alone the title. Yeah, yeah. And one more thing, sorry, about uh, girl power and what may have gone under the radar. The most prestigious race in all of quarter horse racing, the All-American Futurity, a girl running Brooke Gal powers up and beats the boys in that race. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we will look at the best from 2009. Don't go away.